Hey, Bears, Eric here. And I have to be honest, I was so excited to get home from work um, because I was counting down the minutes till I could get home and check online to see if all of the channels, all the people that I've been following that have been astroturfing X-Men 97, if they made any videos talking about the first two episodes that dropped. It's been almost a whole day since the episodes dropped now. I watched them first thing this morning. I was so excited for this uh, for this cartoon to come back. So I jumped on, I watched it right away, and I'm pretty sure that most people watched it within the first like four to eight hours of them being released because I saw reactions to it all over social media very early today. Uh, but I was like, these channels, these these channels like Melanie Mac, Yellow Flash, uh, Hypnotic, Nerdrotic, Geeks and Gamers, Ryan Cannell, all these guys uh, that have been talking trash about this, Hill versus Babyface, they have to do a video right away because they want to get in the algorithm for X-Men 97, because right now would be the time to do it. Actually, they, they should have started before now. So I'm looking over here, I'm looking through, and I'm like, I wonder what they've said, because I'm going to react to some of their videos. I'm going to do like a mega cut of me reacting to them. And guess what? None of them are talking about it. None of them are talking about this cartoon. The cartoon that they spent months trashing, going after the showrunner, going after the producers, the artists, everybody involved, trying to tell fans of the X-Men that they're not woke and that it's not about civil rights and this is what Stanley intended, blah, blah, blah. All of this stuff that they've been doing, prepping us for a disaster of a cartoon and crickets, literal crickets. It makes me so happy to know that they're trying to think of ways to negatively talk about a cartoon that was really amazing. The first two episodes were so good. I don't really care about Rotten Tomatoes, but I think it says a lot when Rotten Tomatoes hasn't even been like screwed with. We've got 100% critic reviews, 94% fan reviews, and that sort of reflects what I'm seeing online. Like it doesn't feel artificial. It feels like everybody really loves this. The artwork, the voice acting, the cinematography, the way they did lighting in the episodes, Cyclops doing amazing stuff. Storm was amazing. Every every character was showcased in such a great way that I'm like, there's no way that they can astroturf and talk shit about these first two episodes. But I was prepared for anything. And there's nothing. There's nothing. Unless I'm missing it, these channels are not talking about it right now. Let's go through and talk about all their claims so I can shut them all down. Okay, we're this is going to be fun. All right. So one of the big claims was that Rogue's ass had been flattened and that all the women were going to look like men because of body diversity. That that was what they were doing. Even though we were all saying it's animation, the ass isn't going to look big and juicy in every single shot. Um, and, and the fact that we talked about women looking different in terms of like height and shape, which is what the, they were talking about in the art department. And guess what? They all look fantastic in the episode. There's no manly women. There's no weird body types. There's none of that bullshit. So right away, claim debunked. Didn't happen. Did not happen in the first episode. There were people trying to say that Morph and Wolverine were going to be in a gay relationship because they were supposed to be buddies or something, right? And that was, the, that was their complaint that, oh, they're definitely going to be in a gay relationship. Guess what? They're not. They're not in any relationship at all other than being friends, close friends, which is what everybody was saying. You watch the first two episodes, you see that there's just a friendship between the two of them. So none of that happened. They talked about Storm dressing and looking weird or whatever. And we've already debunked the fact that the Mohawk is a comic book classic. They, they, tried, to, they tried to run with that one. That didn't work either. And we know why they're doing that look and why she looks the way she looks in some of those photos because they're doing a certain storyline from the comics that I'm excited for. Comic book accuracy. Love it. Love when they're going to play around with that. So that, again, was debunked. Um, there was supposedly going to be a bunch of representation, trans this, gay that, stuff like that in the first uh, couple episodes of, of the series because they said they're going to start off the gate being super you know, gay woke, trans woke, or whatever it is. Nothing like that in the first two episodes literally doesn't happen. And in the first two episodes of such a short season, you're going to find out what the vibe of the show is in the very beginning. And it's perfectly translated from the nineties to now updating what needs to be updated and leaving in all the core stuff that everybody loves. The big one was morph being non-binary that they were going to be a big, like SJW, like non-binary sore thumb in the show. 
because at some interview from like a year and a half ago or whatever, uh, they talked about Morph being non-binary and, and it hasn't really been advertised or talked about since then. We got an article a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, where uh, the creators addressed the non-binary status and equated it to shape-shifting. And right away I was like, okay, that's what I thought it was going to be. Even though it is very basic and surface level, it, it meant that we weren't going to get any kind of like in-depth storyline about Morph's gender identity on the show. We tried to tell people they don't want to listen because they're all the, the the bigoted griftiness within their minds makes them go down this path. In the episode, the only thing that gets addressed in terms of gender identity towards Morph is that they refer to Morph as they. There's no speeches. There's no conversations. There's no coming out situation. None of that happened. They are already referring to Morph as they now, which means I don't think we're going to get any major storyline about Morph's gender identity. Maybe we will, but it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't really fit with the vibe of the show. So I don't know if they would do that based on these first two episodes. They have a lot of stuff to deal with. I don't know if they're going to like deal with those kinds of things in this first season. Maybe in a later season. I don't know. They're very limited on episodes. My point being is that this is just another, a, another you know, bit of proof that these channels are just trying to grift money off of negative viewership. They want you to be mad at everything. They don't want you to like anything. And so many people I know that saw this that had listened to them were like, it was actually really good. It was really fucking good. And so now they're like, why am I listening to these people? Tell me that I should be hating something. And this is what I've been saying all along. Watch something and determine your own feelings about it. You don't have to listen to somebody that tells you to dislike something because of these things that are, may or may not even happen. This was great. It was great. And now I'm sure they're scrambling, trying to figure out a way to go after the show based on these first two episodes. Or they'll wait until an episode later on when some random thing happens and then they'll go after it, even though everybody's loving it right now. Um, this just goes to prove that Marvel is not dead, contrary to popular belief with the Chuddy channels. We have this and we have Deadpool and Wolverine, which I believe is going to be a fantastic movie. It's going to make a ton of money, I believe, for Marvel. Um, I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's just funny to me that the hatefulness, the negative stuff, all the astroturfing has now shifted over to the Acolyte, which we still have to talk about that, shifted over to Captain America 4. I'm looking at their channels, still talking about uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, American Society of Magical Negroes, they're, they're talking about that. I don't know anybody else is talking about that except for the Chuddy channels. Sydney is still talking about Sydney Sweetie and Madam Web. Magically, X Men 97 has been absent from their, their pages for over a week now. I don't know if they saw the writing on the wall or what was happening, but um, not seeing a lot. And I'm assuming until some more information comes out about uh, Bo DeMaio, who's no longer attached to this cartoon, no longer attached, doesn't work for X Men 97 Marvel anymore. Until something else happens with that, I don't know if we're going to see anything else come out from these guys. So I'll keep an eye out. You know me. If something stupid comes out, I will talk about it. I'll discuss it. I'm going to start doing live streams soon, um, regularly. So stay tuned for that. And if you're new to my channel, you're finding me for the first time, join the revolution. And what I mean by that is subscribe over here, leave a like, leave a comment, and become part of a community that is fighting back against the negative algorithm that YouTube has established and allows these uh, toxic channels to grow and flourish. We're trying to get ourselves into that river, into that stream, so that we can start dismantling it from the inside. And that's what I would like to do. So join the revolution, become part of that over here to help change some hearts and minds and blow through the bullshit. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And let me know your thoughts and opinions on X-Men 97 down below. I loved it. Thought it was fantastic.